The key to understanding histograms is to uh, know that maths has a better version of the English word between. If I say between 1 and 10, like pick a number between 1 and 10, it's famously the case that people aren't always sure whether the number 1 is allowed or the number 10 is allowed. Also, they're not always sure whether they're allowed decimals, so is 1.1 allowed, etc., um, etc. Et well, the maths version of the word between solves that. It uses these little devices because if a number is greater than 1 and it's also less than 10, it has to be in between. The fact that 1 is allowed is indicated by this bar, but 10 is the fact that 10 is, allowed, 10 is not allowed is indicated by the absence of a bar there. Now, if you remember that that, that is the maths device for the word between, a histogram is very easy to get started. So here's an example of a table from which you would have to construct a histogram. Okay, so let's say we've got uh, two numbers between 0 and 2, and um, 8 numbers between 2 and 6. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to put some rectangles in between 0 and 2 and in between 2 and 6. That's logical because that means the word between. Now, um, just get started by um, setting up what I call little tree stumps. If we're going to put a rectangle in between 0 and 2, um, so let's make that 2 that 4 and that 6. So these little tree stumps, tree stumps just indicate the startings of the rectangle. Now the key thing with a um, histogram that's quite unlike anything you've ever seen before oh, sorry I don't know why I put that one there. I'm going to put a rectangle between 0 and 2 and between 2 and 6. Um, so what's different about a histogram is that the heights of the bars don't directly matter. What matters is the area. So you need to put a rectangle of area 2 it's already got a width of 2, so why not have a height of 1? And then you can look at that and say that it's got an area of 2, which it should because there's a 2 there in the frequency column. This next one has a width of 4. If it's going to have an area of 8, it needs to have a height of 2. That is now a 4 by 2 rectangle, which has an area of 8. Um, one thing that can remind you uh, that the heights are not important, that it's the areas that matter, is the fact that there's this strange thing that you've never seen before which has a fairly arbitrary meaning on the vertical axis, that's frequency density. Um, another way to remind yourself that histograms are in play is that the widths of the classes are not equally wide. So 0 to 2 is a shorter stretch than 2 to 6. That's another classic clue that histograms might be in play. So I'll just give you another example. So 0 to 10 10 to 40 okay so got to put a rectangle in between 0 and 10 and between 10 and 40, so that if that's 0 to 10, that's 20, that's 30, that's 40. So my area for my rectangle between 0 and 10 has to be 5, it's got a width of 10, so it's got to have a height of half. So there's my rectangle there, 10 but times half is 5, so that's sweet. It's perfectly okay to do this just by trial and error, have a muck around, do it in pencil first, be willing to rub out, cross out. Um, that's the frequency density column. Um, this one has to have an area of 90, it's got a width of 30, so this is often the case that you realise you haven't left quite enough room. Okay, so let's change this, let's change that to a half, that to one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. So that one is now this, and this rectangle is going to have a height of three, which it must do or else its area won't be 90. So that shaded in business there is the histogram. Now, um, a subtlety that sometimes arises is you get questions like this. So, in a table, let's say there's um, 
uh, three numbers between one and three. Um, two numbers between four and five. Um, and one number six. How do you put that in a histogram? Well, this is a very rough version of the word between, but what you should do in this case, in order to make it fit the general pattern, is to imagine that these categories do not exclude decimals. So in other words, um, 0.9 could be one of these numbers because 0.9 rounds to 1. 3.49 could also be one of these three numbers because 3.49 also rounds to 3. That means that those three numbers can be anywhere from 0.5 up to 3.5. So that's where your first rectangle can go. Because starting at 0.5 and ending at 3.5 is a region of decimals which all round to the numbers either 1, 2 or 3. Either they round up to 1 or they round down to 1 or up to 2 or down to 2 or up to 3 or down to 3. But it can't be 3.5 because that would round up to 4. But that's okay because this little tree stump is the boundary between the first rectangle and the next rectangle. Uh, the numbers that round to 4 or 5 start at 3.5 and end at 5.5. So that's my next little tree stump. And the numbers that round to 6 end at, start at 5.5 and end at 6.5. So that's my final little tree stump. That's got a width of 1. It needs to have an area of 1. So let's make that 1. Now it's 1 by 1, so that's got an area of 1, so that's sweet. This has a width of 2. It needs to have an area of 2. So let's make it have a height of 1. And finally, this has a width of 3. It needs to have an area of 3, so let's make it a height of 1. So that is how you handle this very imprecise little uh, business. It's very important that you do not have gaps between your rectangles. Pretend that these numbers came from uh, people rounding decimals in order to decide which of these categories the numbers fell into. So let's just be clear, 6.49 makes it into the table. 6.49 could be that number because 6.49 would round to 6. 5.5 .5 could also be that number because 5.5 .5 would round up to 6. Um, but 6.51 could not be that number because 6.51 does not round to 6, it rounds to 7 and therefore would not be in the table.